Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt. Every soul shall taste death. Death is a reality, is a fact that everyone believes in. It's a fact. It's a matter that we will all experience at one given point. And what's scary about death is what comes after death because death marks the beginning of the hereafter. And then the consequence of what we've done in this dunya will be faced then. Allah continues in the same verse saying, وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And you will be given your recompense in full on the day of judgment. Which begins with our فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ Whoever is moved from the fire of hell and is admitted into Jannah has indeed succeeded. Death and the agonies and hardships of death and what comes after death in the grave are terrifying matters in the book of al-imam muslim the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said had it not been that you would refrain from burying those who die i would have supplicated allah to make you hear some of the punishments people face in the grave It's a serious matter which we need to prepare ourselves for. Because it's one of two things. Either bliss, joy, and happiness in that segment of our life cycle or the cycle of humanity, dunya, grave, and hereafter, or it's hardship and torture. In the book of Imam Ahmad, and it was classified as authentic by Al-Albani, Al-Bara ibn Azib said, we went out on a funeral with the Prophet ﷺ for one of the people, one of the residents of, the, of Medina, one of the Ansar. And we reached the graveyard and the grave wasn't fully dug yet. So the Prophet ﷺ sat down and we sat around him and look at the description. This is how they used to deal with death. This is how they used to deal with this reality. He said, It is as if we are so calm and quiet. We are contemplating, we are pondering upon this incident. So calm, so quiet, as if birds are standing on our heads. No one is moving. And the Prophet ﷺ had a small stick which he started scraping the ground with. And then he raised his head and he said, Istaeedu billahi min adab al qabr. Seek refuge in Allah from the punishment of, grave, of the grave. And he repeated this twice or thrice. And then he ﷺ went on to give a detailed description of the two types of people, pious believers and otherwise. He gave the full description of the pious believers and how their souls come out and the types of bliss and joy they will enjoy in the grave. And then after that, and this is the point of emphasis in the khutbah, he went on to give the details of those 
disbelievers, hypocrites, and disobedient people. He said, at the time of death, angels of punishment descend from the heavens having dark black faces, and they sit far enough where he can see them, and they will have with them a shroud from the fire of hell. And then the angel of death will come and sit next to his head or her head and will say, O oh, evil soul was in the evil body, come out to the wrath and anger of your Lord. And out of fear, that soul will spread in the body, trying to avoid coming out. But then it is snatched out and the Prophet ﷺ gave such a description. He said it is snatched out aggressively and harshly. Just like you take a curved fork, iron fork, out of a wet woolen piece of cloth. It will tear it up in pieces. And this is what happens to that soul. And as soon as he takes it, these angels will not let it settle in his hand for a blink of an eye, the Prophet ﷺ said. And they will immediately take it and place it into that shroud from, from hell. Then from it will come out a foul, stinky smell, worse than the smell of a dead animal worse than any smell that was ever found on earth. And then they start the journey of ascent. They will start ascending to the skies. And whenever they pass by a group of angels, they will inquire, who is this evil soul? They will say, this is so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. What a disgrace. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will be given the worst names ever found on earth that he was called with or by. And then they reach the first to the lowest heaven, as sama dunya They ask permission to ascend further, but the block comes. The permission is not granted. And then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, recited, لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنة حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياق. The doors of the heavens will not be opened for them, and they will not enter Jannah. It is as difficult for them to enter as it is for a camel. To go through the eye of a needle. And then Allah will say, Put the record of this liar in the lowest part of earth in Sijin. And then his soul will be thrown back to earth. And the Prophet ﷺ recited, وَمَن يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتَخْطَفُهُ الطَّيْرِ أَوْ تَهْوِي بِهِ الرِّيحُ فِي مَكَانٍ سَحِيقٍ Whoever associates with Allah, it is as if he has fallen from the heavens and birds start snatching him or wind comes and blows him away to a far place. And then his soul is placed back in, into his body. And then two angels come and start asking him the three famous questions we all know now. But the matter is not knowing it. The matter is acting upon it. That's what's going to make us able to answer. He will be asked, Marabuk, who's your Lord? What is the response of a person who did not act 
upon the fact that Allah is his Lord, he will say, ah, ah, ladri, I don't know, I don't know. Subhanallah. What a difficult moment. Madinu, what's your faith? What's your religion? Ha, ha, I don't know. What do you say of that man that was sent to you? Ha, ah, ha, I don't know. He will not know. He will have no answer. Though this information, this piece of information was available, was known to him in dunya, just like we know it now. But the fact that he did not act upon that Muhammad is the messenger to be followed. His sunnah is to be followed. Allah is the only one to be worshipped. When you don't act upon this, when you don't take Islam as a code of life, as a method of living your entire life, you will say, ah, I don't know. And then a call will be made from the sky, Kadab, he's a liar. Dress him from fire. And make the place he lies on from fire. And open a gate towards him from fire. And he will start feeling the hot wind of Jahannam and the scorching heat of Jahannam. And then the grave will start squeezing until his ribs, his bones become interlaced. And then he struck with a sledgehammer. If it was to strike a mountain, it would cause it to become dust. And he will make a loud cry that will be heard by everything except mankind and jinn. And then a man, an ugly looking man, with a foul order, and ugly, despicable looking clothes or appearance would approach him in his grave. And he said, he would say, evil and bad tidings to you, to you, this is the day you were promised. Aren't we promised that we will die? Don't we all know that we will die? Don't we all know that we'll go down into this hole? We do. So we were promised and we know that. This is the day you were promised. And the dead person would say, Who are you? Your face brings nothing but evil. Your bad news. Who are you? The expected answer will be, Ana amuluk al khabith. I am your evil deed. I am your evil deeds. You don't pray in the masjid. You don't pray. You smoke. You listen to music. You shave your beard. Sisters don't cover up. Sisters wear perfume, wear makeup. Men and women flirt, talk, joke. You deal in riba. You cheat. You bribe people or accept bribe. Any evil deed that you do in this dunya will come to you on that day. And you would wish you'd never done it. So you would not see this consequence in the grave. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Let's talk about some matters that will result in punishments in the grave. In the book of Imam Ahmed. And classified as authentic by Al Arnaut. The Prophet ﷺ passed one day by 
a grieve or a couple of grieves with his companions and he said these two are being punished and they're not being punished for something that is difficult to be avoided one is a person who backbites people and the other one is a person who is not careful when it comes to ritual purity when he urinates he doesn't care if it splashes back on his clothes or in his body and this is something that those particularly those who urinate from men while standing up especially in public places right this is more li than likely to happen when you do so well this results in the punishment of grief of the grief because ritual purity is a must for salah and knowing that you have impurity and going on to pray nullifies it another thing is being indebted and die with a debt on you in the book of Imam Ahmad classified as authentic by Al-Albani Sa'd ibn al-Atwal radiallahu anhu said my brother died and left behind 300 dinars Dinar is a golden currency. And he left behind children, so I intended to spend on them from his money. But the Prophet ﷺ came to me and he said, Your brother is being held from enjoying bliss as a result of a debt he has. Go pay it off. So his brother, this, this brother went and paid off everything and came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I paid everything off except for one woman who's claiming two dinars, but she has no evidence proven that my brother owed her. He ﷺ said, give her and consider it as charity. Another thing is Namima, malicious gossip spreading malicious gossip is a cause for one to be punished in the grave in, the in another incident the prophet sallallahu passed by two graves and he said these two are being punished one of them goes around spreading malicious gossip amongst people you know what this does it makes people lose trust in one another when one goes and says something evil to this man about the other one and goes to this one and speaks to the, about the first one and goes on amongst the community this makes people lose trust in one another this destroys homes this disunites the muslim community and thus that person deserves such a punishment The following cause is amazing. Uh, SubhanAllah, in the book of Imam Ibn Hibban and classified as sound by Al Albani, the Prophet وسلم, said, A man will be ordered to be lashed one, once in his grave, and after that lash, his grave was filled with fire. And then when the punishment finished, meaning, see, the punishment in the grave for the believers is not perpetual. It's up to the extent when you're purified from your sins, and then it stops. Well, the narration says, when the punishment stops, he will ask, why was I lashed? Why was I punished? He will be told, you prayed one prayer without ritual purity. You see the danger of the first hadith we said? Not caring what happens when you're re urinating, right? And then the second cause was, he will be told, you passed by a person who was being oppressed, a person who was being wronged. 
and you did not assist him. This is to spread the spirit of unity amongst the Muslims. When we don't care about one another, we deserve punishments both in this dunya and in the akhirah. And Imam Al-Qasqalani says, if this is the punishment of the person who refrains from assisting a person who is oppressed and wrong, what type of punishment will be there awaiting the person who actually wronged that believer? Lying. Lying is another thing for which a person deserves to be punished in hell. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ narrates a long dream he saw during which he saw different types of punishments in the grief. Samurai ibn Jundub said that the Prophet ﷺ told us, I was taken by angels and we passed by different. He passed وسلم, or they took him and passed by different types of people. One of these people is a person who is lying down and then an iron hook was placed on his mouth and cut it back to his, the back of his head. And then again, it's placed in his nose and he, his, his face is cut back to his head. And then again in his eye and then cut through back to the back of his head and then flip to the second side. As soon as they're done with the second side, the first side goes back to the normal situation and go on. They will go on with this until Allah decrees something else. And when he was asked, what type of punishment is this? Who is deserving of this? They said, it is a person who tells a lie and then it spreads. Does this click? Does this bring anything to mind? Something like social media, for example? WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, right? Spreading things left, right, and center, not knowing whether it's authentic or not. Particularly, and it makes it much severer and worse when it's something related to Islam, like a narration that's fabricated or inauthentic, or a saying attributed to a scholar or to a companion, and it doesn't exist. We need to be careful about what we repost, what we retweet, what we republish, because it's dangerous. <laughs> Sleeping through salah. You know, some people stay up so late, and just shortly before Salatul Fajr, an hour, a couple of hours, right? When it's impossible for him to wake up, he goes to sleep. And he doesn't set an alarm. And he just sleeps until 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever. Now, if he's got a job, I assure you, he will wake up to go to the job. But not necessarily to pray. Right? The Prophet ﷺ, amongst the people whom he passed by, is a man who is lying down. And then a huge rock was held and it would be thrown and smash his head and it would roll away. And then it would be brought back and as soon as they come back, his back is back to its normal situation. And again, struck with it, smash his head, crack it open and rolls, comes back, it's sound again and so on. And when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked why, he said, it is for those who sleep through the prayer. Who sleep through their prayer. Sometimes people come back from work shortly before Salatul Asr. You know that if you go to sleep after working eight, ten hours, you're not going to be able to wake up. Don't subject yourself to this punishment. And the final thing 
I would like to mention there are many other sins that have a special type of punishment in the grave, but I just chose some. Is zina. Zina. The Prophet ﷺ passed by a group of people who were placed, men and women who were naked, placed in a huge oven, making loud screams that are not understood. And then a flame would come from underneath. And it's only fair to come from underneath to burn the misused organs of the body right and they will make a very loud scream when they touched by the flames of the fire we ask allah azza wa jal to protect us our souls and bodies from the punishments of the grave we ask him for his mercy and to make us firm on his faith to enable us to avoid anything that will make us deserving of any of these punishments. We ask Him to purify our souls. We ask Him to grant us a good end where we meet Him subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst He's pleased with us. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma khfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين